Ever wanted to solve math problems with Python? Well, now you can. What? I can do that already. The specific type of math problems that we're talking about are mathematical optimization problems. They're often referred to in the fields of linear programming, operations research, and constraint-based programming. Now, you're probably thinking, what the hell is that? Well, don't fret, we're gonna go through all of that in a second. So let's get to it. Now, we're gonna be covering a bunch today, but specifically, we're gonna be covering what mathematical optimization is, the problem that we're trying to solve, and last but not least, we're actually gonna code it up. So what is mathematical optimization? There's three key things that you need for any good mathematical optimization problem. These are a goal or an objective, your variables or levers that you can change, and last but not least, your constraints. So you're trying to find an optimal value for your variables or your levers so that you can maximize or minimize your goal and stay within your specific constraints. A good example of this is how much of each product should we produce if we've got a constrained factory floor. Another really good example is how should we schedule people on a roster so that we maximize our productivity, but we also meet the requirements of our scheduling process. Now the specific problem that we're going to be solving again has three key things. It has goals, variables, and constraints. Now in our particular case, we're helping out a phone factory and we're trying to work out how many phones of each model that they have should we generate in order to maximize our sales? Now, in that particular problem, we're assuming that they sell all of the phones they generate, but ideally we wanna make the phones that are ideally the most profitable. Now, our core constraints are that we have a minimum level of production that we need to meet in order to hit our contractual requirements, but we also have a cap on how many hours that we have to generate products within our factory. So in this case, we need to work out how many tiny phones and how many foldy phones we should make in order to maximize our overall sales. Enough theory, let's get into the code. So let's get started solving our problem. Now we're gonna be working inside of a Jupyter notebook for this. So first up, what we're going to do is lay out our problem. Now remember, a mathematical optimization problem has three key things. Those are goals, variables, and constraints. So what we're going to do is just lay out our notebook to give it a little bit of a framework to surround that. So let's go ahead and add in some new cells. So in this case, we're going to add in First up, we're going to add in a cell for our variables. And then we're also going to add in a markdown cell for our constraints. And last but not least, we're going to add one for our goals or objectives. Perfect. Now, in terms of our variables, we've got a couple of key ones. So before we actually go and build those variables, what we want to do is import our dependencies. So to do that, we're just going to use the docplex package. So this sort of has a really powerful solver behind it, so that's gonna allow us to solve our mathematical problem. So let's import Doplex, and then from MP and model, we're gonna import the model class. And then what we're going to do is create an instance of the model. So everything is going to be attached to our model, and think of your model as your problem, really. So we'll create a model, and we're going to name it phone production. And then within our variables, we're going to name a couple of variables. So first up, what we're going to do is we're going to create our phone production variables, right? So we have two classes of phones. We had our foldy phone and we had our tiny phone. So let's create two variables for that. And we also had our tiny phone production. Now to create a variable with docplex, all we need to do is type in m dot continuous variable and we're going to name this as well. So we'll name it uh, Foldy. Then what we can do is copy that to our tiny phone and rename that tiny phone production. Cool, so we've got our two production variables. Now we had a couple of constants as well that we didn't mention in our problem formulation statement. So what we're going to do, or our key constraint is really how much time we've got within our manufacturing plant to actually create these Phones. So what we want to do is set up a variable that contains how long it actually takes to generate or create one of these phones. So let's create two variables for that. So we're going to create, and these are actually constants here. And we're going to call one foldy phone time. And we're going to say that it takes on average one and a half hours to create a foldy phone. And we're also going to create one for tiny phone. And in this case, we're gonna say that it takes two hours to create our foldy phone, or our tiny phone, sorry. Now there's two other constants that we wanna add. These are how much sales we're gonna generate from each one of these phones. So in this case, we are going to create one for our foldy phone sale price. And in this case, we're gonna say our foldy phone is going to sell for $900. And we're also going to create one for our tiny phone sales price. 
and we're going to say that one sells for one thousand one hundred dollars perfect now that's pretty much all of our variables set up now what we want to do is start adding our constraints so at the moment we know that we need to generate uh, x number of foldy phones and y number of tiny phones we know that it's going to take one and a half hours to create each foldy phone and about two hours to create each tiny phone and we also know for every foldy phone that's sold so assuming that everything we create is sold we generate 900 bucks and for every tiny phone that's sold we generate 1100 now what we're going to do is start to build up our constraints so remember that we had some contractual constraints so at a minimum we need to produce 500 foldy phones and at a minimum we also need to produce 200 foldy phones now we also have our production constraints so we've only got 2999 and a half hours to use within our production plan so let's start modeling up these constraints so the first constraint that we're going to add is our minimum foldy phone production so we're going to call that foldy phone constraint and to do that we're just going to again append a constraint to our model now in this case what we're going to say is our foldy phone production needs to be greater than or equal to 500 because that's a minimum production level now we're also going to add another one and this one's going to be for our tiny phone production and in this case we're going to say that our tiny phone production needs to be at minimum 200 phones perfect so that's our constraint sort of setup so we've set up our foldy phone constraint and we've set up our tiny phone constraint now what we need to do is create a production constraint so remember our production plan has a cap as to how many production hours is actually got available and in this case our cap is 2999 and a half hours so how do we actually generate this production constraint well we can do it in a similar way to how we set up our foldy phone and tiny phone constraint so what we'll do is we'll set up a total production constraint and here we're going to add another constraint and what we're going to say is the sum of our foldy phone production hours and our tiny phone production hours must be less than 2999 and a half hours so we can do that using the sum formula and so what we're going to say is the sum of our tiny phone production multiplied by our tiny phone time plus the sum of our foldy phone production multiplied by our foldy phone time must be less than our production hours so let's do that so we're going to say our tiny phone production and our foldy phone production and so right now we haven't actually added our constraint so we're going to say that it needs to be less than 2999 hours 299 and a half hours and that's basically our last constraint done so now what we've done is we've set up our foldy phone constraint so we're going to meet our minimums our tiny phone constraint again our minimums and we've also set up our overall production constraint so that's really our constraints sort of set up now the last thing that we need to do is specify our goal or objective and then solve our problem so in this case we're trying to maximize the value of sales so what we're going to do is maximize our sales formula so in this case our sales formula is really our foldy phone production multiplied by our foldy phone sales price our tiny phone production multiplied by our tiny phone sales price so this sort of assumes that we sell all of the phones that we actually produce so that's a key assumption there right cool so that's our objective sort of done now what we need to do is actually go and solve this problem so right now we've actually gone and constructed our problem so our model's got our variables our constraints and our goals now the last thing that we need to do is really just solve it so to do that we can create a new variable to hold our solution and then we're just going to call m.solve and our problem is now solved we can actually view that using the display function and you can see we've now generated our optimal production levels so in terms of our foldy phones we're going to produce 1733 of those and in terms of our tiny phones we're going to produce 200 of those now as a result of producing each of those and selling them all we're going to generate one what is that we're going to generate 1.7 what roughly 1.8 million dollars so what we've gone and done here is we've actually gone and generated an optimum production schedule based on the time that we've got available at our manufacturing plant and we've effectively solved our problem and that about wraps it up thanks so much for tuning in guys hopefully you found this video useful if you did be sure to give it a thumbs up and hit subscribe thanks again for tuning in peace